Hey guys, it's Shira from Woodshop Diaries. Now, I love my mom, but sometimes she gets these ideas and I just roll my eyes and I assume she'll change her mind pretty quickly, so I just don't get in a big hurry to start on the projects that she has for me. I know her pretty well, she passed on a lot of those indecisive traits to me. She's also kind of funny on camera. <laughs> I want to show my shoes, because I made a point to take my ugly tennis shoes off. I'm recording and I'm putting this all of this in the video. You had better not. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So this outdoor dining table was one of my mom's projects she wanted me to do, and I assumed that she would change her mind, so I put off starting it until I realized she was serious. Hence, that's why I'm finally finishing it here at the end of outdoor season. Oops. But better late than never, right? This outdoor dining table turned out way better than I expected, and it's such a simple and quick assembly. So if you're ready to get to the build, let's go. A while back, Highland Manor Wood Products sent me a leg to build this pedestal coffee table and four legs to build a dining table. So I've been eager to use these dining table legs all summer, but again, mom changes her mind quickly, so I didn't want to use them and then her decide she wanted something different. But here we are finally putting them to good use. I'll leave a link below to these specific legs and a coupon code if you decide to get some for your next project. They have a bunch of other leg options as well if this isn't your cup of tea. So to get started, I grabbed these legs and started figuring some dimensions. My mom wanted an 8 foot long, 3 foot wide table. It actually ended up being about 34 and a quarter inches wide and 94 inches long, so close enough. I cut 4 pieces of 2 by 4 to 24 inches long to make 2 sides of the table base. By the way, I used standard construction lumber for this table. I could have used treated lumber, but as long as my mom keeps it painted and sealed on all sides, it should last her a pretty long while. I assembled this table with an exterior wood glue and exterior grade pocket holes and screws. So I drilled one and a half inch pocket holes into the ends of the two x four pieces and attached between the legs just like shown using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. By the way, I've got the plans, all the dimensions for this build, and everything that you need to get started in the link in the description below, so check that out if you are wanting to build one for yourself. Because these legs had this flat spot at the top and the bottom, I decided to add these pieces onto the bottom to dress it up a bit. It would have been fine without them, but they do add a little sturdiness to it and make it look a little cooler. Once my two sides were assembled, I cut three pieces of 2x4 to 84 inches long and drilled pocket holes into the ends. I attached these between the two sides using two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. Two at the top for an apron and one centered at the bottom between the stretchers. There were better ways to put these pieces together than what I'm doing in this video, but I didn't think of them until after the fact, as is usually the case. Once the main base of the table was together, I added two top supports between the long aprons with pocket holes and screws. These are just to help support the tabletop and to give me somewhere to screw the top pieces into.
Speaking of the top pieces, I trimmed them down to 94 inches long. The reason I trimmed them, by the way, was just because um, a couple of the boards had some cracks on the end and I just wanted to cut those off, so I ended up making it 94 inches long instead of the standard 8 foot 96 inches long. Outdoor tabletops need some gaps to allow rain or snow or whatever to fall through so it doesn't just puddle up on top of the table. I allowed a quarter inch gap between the boards on this top, but to add a decorative touch and to help the water roll off the sides better, I used a router and a chamfer bit to route an edge along all of the boards for the top. This is totally optional, but it did make it look a little fancier, which my mom is always a fan of. By the way, I don't think that I mentioned already, but the boards that I used for the top were standard 2x6 construction lumber boards. Once the edges were routed, I spaced the boards out with a quarter inch gap between them and an overhang on the long sides of one and a half inches from the leg. The spacing worked out to allow one and five eighths overhang on the short side instead of one and a half. It's close, just slightly more than the longer sides. You can see all the details and what I'm talking about better in the plans linked below. To make this easy, I just toenail screwed these boards in place through the four short table supports at the top of the base. I could have used pocket holes and screws or even L brackets, but simply driving the screws in at an angle to attach them was quick and easy and will work just fine. I did as many from the top as I could and then I crawled underneath and screwed the rest from the bottom. I'm getting way too old for this. I brought it over to my mom and dad's house to let my mom paint it because I hate painting and she insisted on it being painted white. And then once she was done with her part, it was finished. By the way, this is sitting on her paper patio during everyday use, so it's not sitting directly on the grass. I just moved it here to take a few pretty pictures. To help prolong its life though, I do suggest putting a small washer underneath the legs and setting it on a patio or a flat surface, like not grass to keep it slightly off the ground. This will prevent it sitting in puddles of water and damaging the legs over time. I'm glad to have this project completed and my mom is glad to have a place for her and dad to hang out in the backyard. That's a win-win. So I've got the full plans over on my site and we'll add a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and this project, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you aren't already subscribed, I'd also love if you'd subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on what's coming next. That's it for now guys, until next time, happy building.